Alright, let's do it. It's time for the morning announcements! Morning announcements on the Nightcap with Nightcat YouTube channel. This is the Kitch Minded Morning Show where we get you ready for the day. I'm so happy you're here. Good morning, Erica. Good morning, Lindy, Shelby, Marissa, Katie, Dog on T, Dark Prince, Zizor. Hello, everyone. It is so good to see you. Make sure to say hi over in the live chat. I like to check in on that throughout the stream in the morning, just see what everybody's up to and chat with everyone. Uh, like I said, we've got a great show coming up. I'm going to get you all caught up with the morning muse, tell you the pop culture headlines so you don't feel left behind. We're going to talk about that Game of Thrones prequel now that we finally have some details. And then I'm going to dig into the book of let's see this one is why you shouldn't eat your boogers and other gross facts about your body because human bodies are gross and uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit but before we get into any of that <clears throat> i went rollerblading for the first time in 20 years this weekend literally i paid money to go to classic skating just like back in the day and i asked them <laughs> to give me skates. I strapped wheels to my top heavy body and just went out onto the floor. Here's the thing, I like I said, I haven't been on rollerblades since I was literally like nine years old. It has been over 20 years since I have been on rollerblades. Turns out, I'm pretty good at rollerblading. I can get going pretty fast. What I cannot do is stop, or stop fast or slow or at all, really. So. I need to have a conversation with the parents watching because I don't feel like your children have a proper fear of danger. I think we've coddled these kids too much. I think that they genuinely think that nothing can hurt them. They're impervious. They're Superman. And the reality is, if a 260 pound man falls down on top of you, it's gonna crush your teeny tiny little body, okay? You cannot cut off a giant man when you're a tiny seven-year-old. And I feel like parents have not taught their children this because some little brat in these little shades on his stupid little razor scooter kept zipping right by me. I was like, you're playing Russian roulette with your life. What are you doing? I cannot stop. I will crush you to death. So parents, I think now is the time to sit your children down. I know there's a lot to talk about with them. You gotta talk about like drugs and sex and gun safety and all that other stuff. But if you could tell them to stay out of the situation where they might get crushed, to just look around and be aware of the area around them. And if there is a 260 pound man on wheels coming full speed right for their face, tell them to get out of the way. Tell them to move. It is for their own safety. It's for their own good. I will literally crush them. And there's not good, and listen, the really bad part is, no matter what, it's my fault, right? If I crush a child, it's my fault. No matter how far away that child appeared, and no matter how quickly that child was suddenly in front of me, it is my fault if I crush a child. So talk to your kids about staying out of the way. It's just like playing in traffic. If, the, if, if there's a giant person on wheels, they're gonna get crushed. Tell them to get out of the way. Treat it like a car. Just treat it like you would treat a car. <laughs> All right, I think it's time for us then to move into the morning muse. The morning muse is the part of the show where we go through the top pop culture headlines for the day. I get you all caught up so you got stuff to talk about when you get to work and school. And I wanna get started up to our neighbors, the great north, Canada. Canada. <clears throat> Nearly 900 Canadian residents went without the internet all over the weekend. Saturday morning, they woke up, their internet was down. The cable company went outside to investigate what happened. And the internet was down for literally the most Canadian reason. The most uniquely Canadian reason I can think of. Beavers, who were building a dam, chewed through the wires. And I guess they actually had to dig three feet deep and chew through four and a half inches of conduit in order to get this wire chewed through. Now, the crews continued to investigate. They finally found the dam, and when they investigated the dam, they found that beavers had been taking long strips of cable and using it to make their dam. So these beavers literally dug half a grave. Grave is six feet, wires are three. They dug half a grave, chewed through four and a half inches of conduit, and then stole all the wires, like, like little junkies. Junkies steal wires and put them in their houses, not beavers. Come on, guys. 
So they were able to replace those strips of cable that had been chewed through and internet was restored to the residents by Sunday afternoon. So they only went like a day without the internet, but I'll be real with you. I wouldn't trade the internet for beavers. <laughs> I love beavers, I think they're cute, but I love the internet way more. And you know what I can see on the internet? Videos of beavers. So if we gotta do a whole catch and release, send them somewhere where there is an internet that they can ruin. I guess that's what we're dealing with these beavers because mama needs her TikTok. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Game of Thrones. It was like, at the time, the most expensive show ever made. That is now being talked by the new Lord of the Rings series that's being filmed in New Zealand right now for Amazon Prime. But the last season of Game of Thrones, it was the budget was $15 million an episode. Like, movie budgets for each episode. And uh, it was kind of a letdown. <laughs> the first four seasons were really popular and I feel like it got everyone sucked in and involved. And in the last four seasons, all anyone did was trash it. Just trash it. And I didn't watch like the last few seasons, so I didn't understand why people kept watching. They'd just be like, oh, it's so bad. I'm like, then stop watching it. They're like, no, I have to see how it finishes. I am too invested now. I go, that's lame. If I got a meal at a restaurant that was bad, I wouldn't keep eating it. I don't know why you're punishing yourself like this. Well, Game of Thrones, even though the finale was like the most critically reviled thing in the entire world, they are pushing, they are pushing through with the prequel series. So there's one, there's several prequel series and spinoffs that they're developing. There's one that is now officially in production. So they're actually making it literally right now. Uh, it is called Game of Thrones House of Dragons. And this is going to take place about 300 years before the events of the original Game of Thrones series where the Targaryens rule it all. And there's a Targaryen civil war and, you know, all this stuff. Basically, it's going to be a lot of dragons because that's what everyone got involved for the first time uh, was for all the dragons. So I think it'll be really interesting. They always talk about the Mad King Targaryen and how wicked he was and what all the nasty stuff that he did. So I guess we're actually going to see what happened 300 years ago. That'll be interesting. I, I don't know if I'll watch it. <laughs> Cause like I, they ruined it, man. <laughs> I'm not interested in watching it. If the ending is going to be so bad uh, and I can't trust them to do it the right way this time. So I'll let you watch it. And you tell me how it is. How does that sound? And finally, Britney Spears. So, he, oh, here's the quick rundown of her conservatorship. Uh, back in 2007, 2008, her dad went to court, got legal conservatorship, not only of her estate, like he runs all of her business and her money and everything, he also has conservatorship of her person. So he gets to make any legal decisions for her, whether or not she can get married, whether or not she can buy a house, like all of that has to go through her dad and the estate and, and through because of this conservatorship. Her mom has recently tried jockeying for power in the conservatorship. And um, now her mom is suing the law office that her dad hired to maintain this conservatorship. So it's just been this whole thing of back and forth. They're fighting over the smallest details when in reality, the fight should be, she's an adult woman. She doesn't need a conservatorship. Well, here's basically what's going on right now. Lynn, who is Britney's mom, says that the law firm Jamie, Britney's dad, hired was charging exorbitant fees and not doing any of the stuff that they said they were going to do. So, like, they charged, like, a $400,000 fee to protect Miss Spears and her reputation online. But her mom was like, uh, have you seen what's going on lately? Like, you guys aren't doing anything. What are you talking about? And so uh, she's suing them. She wants at least a quarter million dollars returned to Britney's estate, possibly even more down the road if they can find other charges that they didn't actually fulfill. Now, here's what the law firm said. And it's not no. It's not no, we didn't do this or no, we're innocent. Here's what they said. They said, despite having zero involvement in her uh, daughter's conservatorship until very recently, Lynn is asserting claims as if she were a party directly involved, which she was not. <laughs> so basically the law firm's whole argument here is, girl, you weren't around. You don't know what any of these fees are for. You don't know what we did. Get out. And I kind of agree with them on that. Like if you weren't a party to it, if you were not here, dealing with the paperwork, going through the slog, showing up to hearings, 
Uh, because if you don't know, conservatorships are actually really complicated. In order to do anything, the, the people who own the conservatorship have to usually get it approved by the court. So like in the Britney Spears documentary, they show one of the lawyers um, ask, or no, it was like one of the one of Britney's staff members needed a raise and literally a judge had to sign off on the raise. It's crazy how involved the court has to be with every decision made. But Lynn wasn't there for any of it. And I believe it was, oh gosh, I could be wrong. But Jamie Lynn Spears, Britney's little sister, I believe said, I don't, she, she, she stopped short of saying that there shouldn't be a conservatorship. But all she said was, my dad shouldn't be in charge of the conservatorship. That's all she would feel comfortable saying. Just that, I believe that my father's not capable of running the conservatorship is basically the gist of it. So... Ugh, it's just a mess, and unfortunately, this law this law fight is not going to do anything to protect Britney or get rid of the conservatorship. And I don't know what Lynn's goals are. The thing is, like, your best bet would be to get Lynn in charge of the conservatorship and then have her running everything. Because uh, it sounds like that's kind of what Britney wants, and maybe Britney will have a bigger say in what's going on with her money and her business. But her mom also hasn't had a great track record <laughs> of like, you know, being involved in the business and the money and stuff. Like she was there for the early parts of the tour, but for the most part, Brittany got sent out with like a personal assistant when she was a child and said, okay, go tour the world, bye. It should be Brittany in charge of her own money. All right, and that is The Morning Muse. Uh, let's take a quick talk real quick to thank our patrons, patreon.com slash nightcatshow. This is how we're keeping the show going. This is uh, just a monthly subscription. You can donate either $3 or $5 a month. Those are your pledges. You can pledge more if you want. I'm not requiring it, but it would be really nice. Uh, this is how we're keeping the show going. I have been looking for a job for two months. I can't find anything in my field or anything in a related field. So basically, <laughs> my options are keep applying and hope maybe Nightcat works out or give up everything and go get an office job, which I will do at some point if I have to, but I'd really like to stay in the creative field. I've worked like the last decade, you know, trying to build a career in this. And unfortunately, there's just not a lot of people hiring right now. So this is how I'm doing it. This is how I'm staying independent. This is how I'm keeping the show going until I have to get an office job or something else happens. Patreon.com slash Nightcat Show. Our patrons donate very generously to keep us on the air. And I do want to thank we have a new patron, Nate. Nathan Green. Good morning, Nate. Uh, he usually is in the uh, in the chat. So good morning, Nate. Hi oh, he is there. Hi, Nate. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. I really appreciate it. You're the best. Make sure you tell your friends to watch the show and also to become patrons. Patreon.com slash Nightcat Show. That $3 or $5 will come out right around the first of the month. So if you have the extra money to spare, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for giving it uh, even a thought, even considering it. The link is down in the description of this video. Look for the link tree, linktr.ee slash Jackson Witt. If you click on that, it'll take you to the Patreon. It'll take you to the channel. It'll take you to the podcast. It'll take you literally anywhere you want to go. Patreon.com slash Nightcat Show if you want to look in the browser. And thank you, Nate. You're the best. Don't forget, we have our true crime tour starting in like two days. <laughs> Thursday is our first ever true crime walking tour. Uh, it's a little over a mile walking. We're going to stop by five different true crime locations. We're going to stop at a couple of bars, get some drinks. Mostly we're going to hang out and party and have a good time. And I'm going to tell you about murder. I mean, what's better than that? Tickets are still for sale on Thursday's show. So this Thursday and next Thursday, but the Fridays are sold out. Um, if these go well, I'm going to reassess them and maybe introduce some more dates and do a few more of them. So don't count on that, but I'm hoping. If you cannot come on a Thursday, you were really hoping for a Friday. There might be Friday dates in the future. I'm working on it, I promise. Uh, again, true, uh, true Crime Walking Tour tickets, if you're interested, can be found in the link tree, linktr.ee slash Jackson Witt in the description of this video. All right, let's see here. What else we got going on? Oh, I think it's time then for us to get into why you shouldn't eat your boogers. Why you shouldn't eat your boogers and other useless or gross information about your body by Francesca Gold. I got this at the Goodwill 
for $2, and it's just chock full of disgusting or interesting facts about your body. And I thought this was fascinating and that it would be a fun thing to talk about. How to tell if someone is lying. Can you tell that someone is lying based simply off of their mannerisms and nonverbal cues? Now, here's the thing, you kinda can. There are a number of nonverbal clues that can help you work out whether someone is lying. In both men and women, increase, uh, they are, excuse me, when they're lying, both men and women increase the number of times in which they swallow or gulp. So they're just like, ooh, ooh. <sighs> But usually this is more noticeable when men do it because men have an Adam's apple and women, it's kind of harder to tell. All right, so here's, here's the thing. They go through and they cite a very specific case of a very public lie that we all know was a very public lie. In 1998, U.S. President Bill Clinton denied having relations with former White House intern Monica Lewinsky. He said, I did not have relations with that woman. Now, he not only gulped, he also rubbed his nose a lot. Now, according to research, when people lie, chemicals are released that cause the tissue inside your nose to swell. So your nose will expand with blood and it's literally called the Pinocchio effect. I had no idea that Pinocchio was based on real events. Apparently when you lie, your nose gets swollen and tickly and uh, it starts to enlarge. Now you can't usually tell just by looking at it that it's enlarging, but if you see someone playing with their nose a lot when they're telling you something uh, and they're gulping a lot, they're using a lot of ums and ahs, they're probably lying. Somewhat interestingly, during that televised statement, Bill Clinton only ever touched his nose when he was telling a lie. So they went through, they analyzed the speech, they looked at when he touched his nose, and then they analyzed that statement whether or not it was a lie, and it turned out every time he touched his nose it was a lie. Isn't that bananas? Absolutely bananas. Now, you're, uh, no, some people will be like, liars will avert eye contact, but that's actually not true. Most liars will maintain eye contact while lying so that they appear convincing. Though, they might rub their eyes to avoid looking at the person they're lying to. Stuttering and using lots of ums and ahs can also indicate that a lie is being told. I have a problem with that. Cause I do use a lot of ums and ahs and likes and stuff. Trust me, I used to have uh, sit downs with bosses in radio where they would tell me all the different ways I messed up over and over again. Uh, they're called air checks. You literally sit down with your boss and you listen to your audio. And if you ever listen to yourself on voicemail, it's the worst, it's the worst. And so when you're fresh, new into radio, you're sitting down, you hate how your voice sounds anyway. And then you have some middle-aged guy sitting across from you, nitpicking every single syllable you say. And the reality is I say ums and ahs because I have ADHD and my brain is going, way faster than my mouth can keep keep up half the time and it's going a million different directions so i stutter just because i can't keep up with where my thoughts are going half the time and i gotta slow down a little bit but you know sometimes i lie i am also a big liar so it's hard to tell when what's a lie and what's just mental illness <laughs> some people may cover their mouth with their hand when they're lying as if their brain is subconsciously trying to stop them from telling more lies so they'll be like, lie, 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 anyway, lie, 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 like, shut up, which I really love. I will cover my mouth if I think I have bad breath. Like, that's usually my situation. I'll avoid eye contact and try to, like, if I face you and I think I have bad breath, I'll cover my mouth, or I'll just ask for a piece of gum. That's usually the quicker solution. And that is why you shouldn't eat your boogers and other weird or gross information about your body. Isn't that interesting? Pinocchio syndrome. I had never heard of that before. Absolutely wild. All right, let's check in on the chat, see how everybody's doing. Good morning. Good morning, Nate, Sadie. Oh, Erica, yes, so skating. I have Googled how to stop now. I didn't think to do that ahead of time because I was like, well, there's a break on it. How hard could it be? Turns out very hard. <laughs> But it turns out while you're skating, you gotta get comfortable balancing on one leg so that you can take the other skate and turn it kind of L-shape and drag the wheels behind you. That's how you're supposed to stop. I don't know. Who am I, Tonya Harding? I don't know how to do any of this. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, don't. 
That's the thing, Zyzor, you can't skate fast. The children will get in the way and they'll get squished. It's ridiculous. Jessica Jones says, watch Lie to Me on Hulu and it talks and explains how people lie. It's a crime show and the detective is a specialist in mannerisms. That's interesting. I'm gonna write that down, hold on. Watch Lie to Me on Hulu. Lie to me on Hulu. All right, great, because I am looking for new stuff. We did finally get a new season. There's 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After that's dropping, finally. So we do. I do have some new stuff. And Handmaid's Tale comes out tomorrow! But uh, I'm always looking for fresh content. I'm always looking for new stuff to watch. So lie to me. That's good to know. I'll keep an eye on that. All right, then I think it's time. We did Why You Shouldn't Eat Your Boogers. We talked about the true crime tours. We welcome Nate to the Patreon. Thank you, Nate. Uh, Morning Muse. I told you about my roller skating or my rollerblading fiasco. I think that's it for the show. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Have the day that you deserve. And if you're having a bad day, do something to de deserve a better day tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to the fish for three minutes of fish. We're going to watch fish, swim around. We're going to listen to some cool music. It's going to be great. Have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow. Uh, bye. Bye. Yeah, Lindy, that's an excellent point. Uh, go like the video, everyone. <laughs> Zipping in disembodied boys. This is actually Cosmo the fish telling you to go like the video. Ha, I'm Cosmo. Where is he? Cosmo, get back over here. What are you doing? Oh, he's over in the other part of the tank now. Cosmo, you're supposed to be telling the nice people to go like the video. Ridiculous. Oh, now he's there. All right. Cosmo, go tell everyone. Oh, yes. Now he's angry. Now he's angry you're not liking the video. <laughs>